Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to answer a question I get all the time on the channel. What's the difference between the Mavic Pro Standard Charging Hub and the Mavic Pro Advanced Charging Hub? Now, if you remember back when the Mavic was first released, it actually came out in two versions. It came out as the basic Mavic kit, which included everything you needed to fly the quad. It also was released in a fly more package, which had a lot of other accessories bundled in. So it had a couple extra blades, some batteries, it had a really nice carrying case, and it came with the Mavic Pro Standard Charging Hub. Now I bought the basic kit, but I really looked at that hub as something I wanted to get. So the minute it was released as an accessory, I ordered it, and my thought was, that's gonna be perfect to allow me to connect up my Mavic Pro charger to it, charge up the four batteries simultaneously, and get me back out flying really quickly. So I couldn't wait for the thing to arrive. When it got here, I started testing it and I realized pretty quickly it doesn't charge all four batteries simultaneously. What it does is charge them individually and it's smart enough to charge the battery that needs the least amount of charge first. So the least depleted battery is the one that it'll charge first. And I had to think about that for a while, but it, it makes perfect sense because if your goal is to get back out flying as quickly as possible, you're gonna wanna put the battery on there first that needs the least amount of time in the charger so you can go off and fly and let the other ones finish their charging cycle. So I liked it an awful lot. What I found interesting about it was that it was intelligent. So it didn't matter where I put the batteries, it would always find the one that need the least amount of charge. That was curious to me. So I love mysteries, right? I love those kind of things. So I, I figured I gotta tear it apart and get into it and figure that stuff out. And I'll get into that in a second. Anyway, so I like that accessory. It worked great for me. It was a really good value. And I've used it ever since I got the Mavic Pro and, and been charging my batteries on it ever since. A Couple months later, they came out with the advanced version of the charging hub. Now, as an engineer, when I hear the word advanced, it better be amazingly different, right? I'm looking for space age features like levitation and invisibility. So tell me what the advanced does that the original standard didn't. So I know if I'm spending my money well to buy that advanced hub. When I did the research on it, all I could really find, there were three differences between the two hubs. The first one was they claim that with the same charger, the same Mavic Pro charger, it would be a faster charging cycle on the advanced hub. Okay, that's good. Faster is always better for me. The second major advantage to it was if you owned a Phantom 4 and had a Phantom 4 charger, you could connect that up to the advanced hub. You couldn't use it on the original hub, you could use it on the advanced hub. Much more powerful charger, so again, speed of charge, right? It's gonna improve my charging cycles and make it happen faster. The third thing is it talked about battery conditioning, that it somehow would balance out the cells better than the standard hub, and it would also do some kind of um, shifting, if you will, to that second battery. So what I found was, if that first battery was almost fully charged, it would start looking at the next battery on deck that it was gonna charge and have a dialogue with it to get that charging cycle going. So again, it was gonna speed up the charging cycle of all four batteries. So all three of those things were really good, uh, good things to have and really good ideas. So I bought the Advanced Charging Hub and I found all those things to be true. So before I get too deep into this, this explanation, let me talk about some of the basics. So the standard charging hub here, its model number is a M1CH-S. The advanced charging hub is an M1CH-P. Now, I don't know why the S and the P are there. Maybe it's standard versus P4 charging, or maybe it's serial versus parallel. Maybe they expected the second one to be a parallel charger and they couldn't get it working. I don't know what the difference is, but that's the S, that's the P, just so you know if you're ordering them, you're getting the right one. But what's curious to me about this, there's a lot of interesting mysteries in this, but the first thing is they look almost exactly the same. So what's the difference, right? Even the same box, the same framework, the only major difference you can see on the bottom is one says advanced and one says standard, but even looking at the connectors on the bottom, they're the same. So I, I was really curious and I wanted to tear them open and take a look at it and I did that and I'll talk about that in a second. So out of the gate, uh, the big difference between them is the standard again can use just the Mavic Pro charger, that's it. If you buy the advanced, you can use the Mavic Pro charger, which gives you a slightly faster charging cycle. You can also use the Phantom 4 charger. Now, could you take the Phantom 4 charger and plug it into the standard? You can't. So that's something I had to figure out. Like this plug will not fit into the standard charger. What are they doing? Let's, is it physical? Is it electrical? What are they doing to block it? Because these are very similar connectors, but this one's slightly larger. And I'll, I'll show you some examples of why that can't happen in a minute. The second thing was, the charging cycle. So what I did was a lot of testing and I depleted all the batteries to about 15% left of their charge. And then I did a bunch of tests. So I did tests on this one with the Mavic charger. 
I did tests on this one with just the Mavic charger. I did tests on this one with the Mavic charger and the Phantom 4 charger, and I'll give you those results now. So the standard charger with four cells at about 15% depleted, in other words, 85% of their charge was gone. It took me about five hours, about five hours and 10 minutes to charge all four, all four cells on the standard charger. Those same four cells, which again, took me a long time to deplete them down to around 15%. And these are rough numbers, but I just wanted to give you a feel. On the advanced with the Mavic charger, knocked about an hour off. So on here, it was about four hours, a little over four hours. So the same four cells here were five hours, here were four hours with this charger. When I used this charger on the advanced, that knocked the charging cycle down. Again, I had to deplete all those cells back down to 15% or roughly 15%. It knocked the charging time from about four hours and 10 minutes down to about two hours and 30 minutes. So dramatically different charging cycle by using this more powerful charger. It should make sense, right? Because if you know these two chargers, if you own both of these quads, you know that the Mavic charger is a 50 watt charger. And the way it gets the 50 watts is it charges at 13.05 volts at 3.34 amps. So if you just do, you know, power equals current times voltage, you can figure out pretty quickly, if you multiply 13.05 times 3.43, you get about 50 watts. On the Phantom 4 charger, it's a 100 watt charger and it charges at a higher voltage and a higher current. So what you're getting here at the charge cycle is 17.5 volts at 5.7 amps. And again, you can do the same formula, you'll come out with 100 watts. So this gives me more energy, more power to charge those batteries faster, but you can't just take that current and fire it at the battery. You can't plug this into your Mavic battery and expect it to charge. So there had to be a lot of intelligence in this guy that was different than this guy to handle that charging cycle and to condition that power so that as it's charging the batteries, it's trickling off the extra energy that's being supplied. So I said, you know, a lot of mysteries around this thing, I'm gonna tear them open. So that's exactly what I did. So if you take these things apart and I've left the screws out of them already, so let me just show you what it looks like on the inside. So here's the standard. Now the standard is a really basic charging system, right? And I'll, I'll put a blow up up so you can see it. But inside here, pretty quickly, you'll notice uh, very few components in there, but there's some intelligence in there because there's a flap on the side of this that has a micro USB connection in it, and that's used for updating the hub. So that should tell you right away that the hub is future-proof. So as DJI makes changes to the programming software and maybe they'll make it a parallel charge type of thing as an option, you can update the firmware on here. So say that you've got firmware on here means you've got a microprocessing unit and you've got some kind of intelligence in there, but that's what the basic one looks like. If I tear open the advanced hub, Inside the advanced hub, it's a little more sophisticated. The first thing you're gonna notice is there's a fan in there. Well, that's interesting, why do you need a fan? Well, if I pop it open further, I've got relatively the same printed circuit board, and again, I'll do a blow up of this. The centerpiece of this is an MPU, it's a microprocessing unit. So there's a lot of brains inside this thing. It isn't just a collection of diodes and resistors, like they really built this thing to be an intelligent smart charger, and when you think about it, why do you need that intelligence? Because the batteries are intelligent batteries. So the batteries themselves govern the inrush of current, how much it charges, how it's balancing the cells out. So really you could get by with a dumb charger. So the logic in here is to determine which of the cells need charging and to handle the trickle charging of that cell and the movement of that current from the first cell it's charging or first battery it's charging to the second battery. Another thing you'll notice in here is around the outside of this, one of the other major differences are the four resistors. There's gigantic resistors in there. Now, if you know anything about switching power supplies, they require some type of load to actually boot up. And this is a this is a power supply that's kind of a raw supply, but those resistors are on there as load balancing resistors. Because as that battery starts to fill up, so you're filling it up with water like a glass of water, the closer it gets to full, the extra water that would be heading towards that battery in current terms has to go to the next battery, has to go somewhere, and it goes to those resistors. Now, in a switching power supply, those resistors are typically low, uh, low ohmage resistors, but high wattage. They're called sand resistors typically. And these are pretty big resistors. And that's why the fan's in there. So it's not like the fan needs to be there to cool off the MPU. That fan is there to keep those resistors cool. And I think that's how it's able to do that sort of shift between the almost full battery and the next battery in its, in its cycle. It's shifting a lot of that extra current that would be heading to the battery that's almost charged into those resistors, then switching over to the second one. So really, really smart. So I think they did a great job with this. Um, the MPU, again, I've looked it up, it's a pretty standard MPU. And then the other question I had was, how do they limit you from plugging, plug, plugging the Phantom 4 charger into the standard hub? Well, I looked at the connections underneath and there's nothing apparent in there. There's nothing blocked. It's not like this is any different. They're pretty much straightforward raw connections. What they did was, and I took this apart further and I'll show you what it looks like. There's actually a collar, a charging collar that fits around the connection where these plugs plug in underneath. 
And if I looked at the two side by side, the one on the advanced charger has a larger hub, so the opening is bigger. The one on the standard charger, the one on the standard charger is smaller, so it's very restrictive. So it isn't an electrical uh, limitation, it isn't a physical blockage. What it is is the collar is small enough where this one can plug in and this one can. And if you hold them up side by side, that's a bigger connector. So it's physically limited. But I thought to myself, okay, as a manufacturer, when I build stuff, I want to try and keep my part count as low as possible. So I want the same tops, I want the same frames, I want everything to be as similar as possible between the two different models except for the printed circuit board. Those collars are different. It's the only major change that you'd make to a system like this is that collar differences. When I flipped, and I'm looking for part numbers, right? Because if they are different, they should have different part numbers. When I flipped them over and looked really close, I found that there were two part numbers, part number one and part number two. So when they're assembling these, when they put the standard together, they use collar number two. And when they put the advanced together, they use collar number one, and that allows for a bigger connection to be plugged in there. But then, you know, again, the mystery behind this, why would you name your first product collar two? and your advanced product, Collar 1. They would typically release that as Collar 1, right? It's the first one we're building, it's part number one. When we put the second one out, we'll have a second collar. So I almost think that this was the one they wanted to design out of the gate. That's got Collar 1 in it. And they basically either had trouble with it or it was delayed, or maybe there's some engineering changes to it. And they put out a standard version of it. And that's the basic version, which has collar number two in it. So anyway, just curious to me. And again, it may be nuance that nobody cares about, but as an engineer, these are the kind of puzzles I love to figure out. So that was curious to me. The other things I want to talk about are the quality. I always talk about DJI products and the quality of the build. You know, again, from an engineering perspective, I look for the small details. You guys are not going to rip apart your hubs. I'm doing this so that you guys can see what's inside of it. But they've really taken a lot of time and care putting this thing together. The fan itself is an ADDA fan. It's got 50,000 hours of, of life on it. It's not a cheap fan. It's, some, it's not some knockoff fan you can get really cheap, dirt cheap fan. You would never know that fan was in there, but it's got outstanding bearings. It's a leading fan manufacturer. So they really care that this thing's going to last a long time. The second thing is, if you look at the printed circuit boards, they've put conformal coating on there. Now, conformal coating is typically used on a printed circuit board for one of three reasons. If it's a board that they want to try and protect the IP of, so they've got some custom chips in there, they don't want people knocking it off, they'll use conformal coating to paint over top of the chips, and it basically makes everything opaque. You can't see what the chips are, so if you have to reverse engineer, you basically have to destroy the board by scraping off the conformal coating. They didn't do that here because they didn't put it on thick enough, so they don't really care if you identify what chips are in there, and I did spend some time looking up the MPU and some other stuff. So the conformal coating is in there for the other two reasons. The first one is the stability of the components. You put it on there to keep everything stable on the board. Now, and this isn't getting vibrated much, it's not getting thrown around much, but if you think about it, you're putting batteries in, pulling batteries out, putting batteries in, so there's a bit of flex on the printed circuit boards. That conformal coating ensures that the components are held down nice and tight to the printed circuit board. They're not gonna vibrate around. It's another layer of cushioning that just really provides protection inside the box. The other thing that's on there for is because the top of this, the one with the fan, is porous. And this one's got a lot of holes around the outside of it. And if this is sitting on a desk or something and you spill a liquid on it, it could destroy the board. So conformal coating is typically used to protect printed circuit boards against intrusion of moisture or water or things along those lines that could actually, or any kind of debris really, that could damage the board. So when I look at these kind of things from an engineering perspective, I love the fact that the guys at DJI said, you know what, we're gonna build a hub. And it's not just gonna be a basic hub where it's got a bunch of resistors and diodes to drop the voltage. We're gonna build a smart hub that actually will charge the batteries in the correct order. And if, if Rick decides to move the batteries around, we're gonna still find the right battery and charge that first. And then we're gonna make it updatable because it's got a micro USB connection on here. So if we decide to update the firmware later or make it smarter or build extra features into it, we're gonna future-proof this by making it intelligent. And we're also gonna spend a lot of time picking the right components because we care about our customers. We're not gonna use the cheapest thing in the market, which may save 25 cents on a fan. We're gonna use conformal coating, even though we don't have to use conformal coating. So all that stuff leads me to believe they care about you as a customer. And I know I rave about these guys all the time, but it seems like every time I take something of theirs apart, I find all the makings of a fantastically well-built product, both from an engineering perspective and from a durability perspective. And these hubs are not expensive hubs. They're less than 50 bucks, probably less than 40 bucks for either of the hubs. To spend that much time in engineering on a product that that's low cost is a mark of a great company. So I like that an awful lot. All right, so that's the basic fundamental difference. In a nutshell, the standard, you can use the Phantom 4 charger on it. does a great job of charging your batteries in order of charge. If you buy the advanced hub, you can use the Phantom 4 
and the Mavic Pro, not Mavic Pro earlier, but the Mavic Pro and the Phantom 4 charger on the advanced hub. You're going to get faster charging times. You're going to get um, balancing across the cells. Just a better option. So here are some of the questions I get, the top five questions I'm going to try and answer out of the gate. The first one I get is, what about this USB connection? Why is it on there? A lot of people have tried connecting this up to the DJI Assistant and trying to update the firmware. That connection is not to update the firmware and the batteries. A lot of people think you put the four batteries in it, connect it up to your DJI Assistant, you can update the firmware and the batteries. It isn't for that. It's for updating the firmware on the board itself. There have been no firmware updates, so it's kind of not used at this point, but I like the fact that it's on there so that if they release a firmware version later on that I need to update the hub with, I can update the hub. So it's there again to update the firmware on the hub. The second is, why does it use the order? Um, and again, I explained that earlier in the clip. The reason it charges the one that needs the least amount of charge first is to get you out the door as fast as possible. I would be frustrated if it went for the one that needed the most charge first because I would have to wait a lot longer to get that charged battery and get back out flying. So that's the reason they picked that order. Um, how does it know which battery is lowest? That's a great question. You could do it a couple of different ways. Um, from a technology perspective, I could look for back current against the battery. I could ping the battery and see how much inrush current it takes and get a rough idea of how much charging time it would need to charge that battery. I think it's a lot smarter than that. I really think that there's some level of dialogue or communication going on between the hub and the intelligence in the battery. Remember, the batteries are intelligent cells, and they've got a microprocessor inside there that has a ton of metrics and heuristics about the health of the battery and the charge in the battery. I really believe, and I don't have any proof on this, but it'd be great to find out, I think that this microprocessing circuit inside here is talking to that computer inside the battery, and it can query all four batteries and say, what do you need, what do you need, what do you need? Oh, you're at 80%, you're getting charged first. So it is kind of clever that it figures that out, but I haven't been able to fool it. And I've moved batteries around really quickly. It always takes a second, gathers its thoughts, and then picks the right battery every time. So really cool technology. Um, which hub is better for me? That's a hard question. I guess the quick answer is they both work great. If you just own the Mavic Pro and you have a Mavic Pro charger, stick with the standard. If you've got a Phantom 4, you think you're gonna pick up a Phantom 4 down the road, or you wanna buy a Phantom 4 charger, then obviously the advanced is better. You can still get some advantages with this if you'd have the standard hub, and it's only a couple of bucks more. So really up to you based on your budget and your needs. This will do everything you need it to do and do a really good job of it. If you think you're gonna upgrade later and get a Phantom 4 charger, maybe you go for the advanced. I guess that's the quickest answer. And then the last question I get, is the hub worth the money? Yes, the hub is worth the money. Just based on the hassle alone of dealing with plugging and unplugging batteries and the fatigue on the connectors, it's way worth it just based on the hassle factor. But the fact that it, you know, is smart enough to charge the batteries in order, it just makes the whole process so much easier just to come home from a day of flying or maybe before I go out for the day of flying, pop my four batteries on there, sit at my desk with a cup of coffee. I can glance over and see how they're doing. Uh, it just takes all the, uh, the headache out of it for me. So it's definitely worth it. There's a lot of other charging options on the market that are out there that do multiple batteries simultaneously. And those are completely different clips that I'll be doing on those. But the short answer is if you have more than one battery, charging hub is a really good value. So anyway, that's all I had for today. I hope this answered a lot of the questions that are out there. If I missed anything, and I'm sure there are a ton more questions I didn't answer, drop them in the comments below. I promise to get back as quickly as I can. I've been super busy with travel, but I've tried to be as diligent as I can. If it's a really urgent question, drop me a message at the, at the website. It's rick at dronevalley.com. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I've got links below for both of these charging hubs. If you want to buy them from DJI, there's a link below. If you use those links, we get a tiny bit of credit, which will support the channel. So we appreciate you doing that. Um, I'm really enjoying putting these clips together. I'm constantly interested and intrigued by the technology. So expect me to do a lot more deep dives like this and teardowns like this on both DJI technology and a lot of other gear that I'm working on. And I hope you guys are finding value in them. So thanks an awful lot for watching. And as always, happy flying.